Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Fur and Fam YouTube channel. We've taken a couple weeks off, and we've gotten our blog started. So if you'd like to read more than you like to watch, check out the link below to the Fur and Fam blog. It's also some other information on the website containing parts that we've used for the conversion, a couple of other pages about us if you're more interested about who we are and what we're doing with the van. Check out the website. You won't be disappointed. In this week's episode, we're going to go through a couple of steps in the bodywork, including wet sanding, taking apart the van to get the doors off and ready for paint, masking the doors off, and then we're going to spray some paint on the doors and the main body sections of the van. So to start off, we're going through some wet sanding. Basically, this is the final sanding that we're going to do on the van before we get to the point of needing to paint it. And the reason that we're doing wet sanding instead of dry sanding is because you can get a much smoother finish while you're wet sanding. There's a lot less friction due to the, the water being there. It carries away a lot of the sanding dust, so your sandpaper lasts a lot longer. And overall, it leaves you with a cleaner surface. Um, it's kind of a, a slow process, a lot of rinsing and waiting for it to dry, making sure you've gotten the right uh, finish that you want because the finish changes when it's wet. So as you can see in the video, it's slowly drying as I'm working my way through the van and then I'm coming back and hitting a couple spots here and there that I see that need a little bit more. And we were wondering, there was still a little bit of orange peel left in the primer and so we knocked down a good bit of that with the wet sanding, but we weren't exactly sure how much of it we were going to have to get out in order to get the paint to lay down flat. So we sanded it down to almost perfect. There was a slight bit of orange peel once it dried. For the most part, it was pretty smooth, but it ended up when we sprayed the paint that the paint laid down flat and there really you couldn't really tell that there was any orange peel in the primer at all so we got pretty lucky there with the paint covering up a little bit of the orange peel that was left and so going through the wet sanding process we hit every surface on the van the only place that we did not wet sand was the roof and this is mainly because you can't really ever see the roof unless you're standing on it or if you're in a high-rise building looking down on it and we do plan to put a roof rack on the top, so that's really going to cover it up some more. So we didn't focus a lot of our attention on the roof, and those are the reasons why. Another area that we focused a little less on was below the bottom line in the body. And the reason that we didn't focus there is because we're planning on shooting that with truck bed liner and that will hide a lot of the imperfections because it goes on with a real thick texture so you don't have to worry too much about it laying down flat um, it's going to cover up any imperfections really so i mean we probably could have not even sanded the primer and sprayed that area and it probably would have worked out fine so we're going through the process here of removing the doors on the sprinters it's actually pretty simple it's really just two hinges and the little actuator that keeps the door from slamming open and closed but we realized that we should probably tape off the inside of the windows before we take them off the van so we stopped what we were doing and started taping up the inside this is because when we're spraying we wanted to be able to spray the inside of the door because you can actually see the inside of the door that sticks out under some of the plastic paneling the plastic paneling doesn't cover the entire inside of the door so taped off the windows and covered up the mechanical parts of the door like the window actuator and the door locks and things like that to try to keep paint out of as many areas as we could that we didn't want paint on. So once we got it masked off we continued taking it off took out the bolts and it took a while to get all that apart but in the end it was really worth it because the doors ended up coming out with a really good finish on the paint job and it allowed us to get into the door jams really well which if we had left the doors on and the hardware and the little rubber boots where the wiring harness goes and the actuator and all those things 
we really wouldn't have been able to spray completely in those spots. There would have been spots that we missed. When you open the doors, you would have seen white in some places. And that's something that we really didn't want with the paint job. We wanted it to look like the van had come from the factory in the lunar rock green color and that that was how it was supposed to be. So it did take a little bit of time to get the doors off, but in the end, we're really glad that we did it because the paint job came out really, really good. It was a lot of extra taping and masking, and we had to reassemble everything, which we'll get to in next week's video, so don't forget to check in next week for another video on that. But it we did get a, a really good finish, and the door jams were really done well with the paint because we could get to them everywhere. And another thing that it did for us, too, is it kind of broke the van up into sections. So... If you've watched the other videos where we've gone through, like the one where we sprayed an entire coat of primer with the doors on, you're painting a 24-foot surface roughly if you count the back doors and the hood once you're going around and everything. So that's a lot to spray at one time, and you end up with a lot of overlapping joints. And so every time you have a joint, basically that's where you finish a stroke, and then when you move over to paint the next section you begin your stroke where you finished so that creates a double overlap and that is a prime place where you can get a run because the paint will be really heavy where you've overlapped it twice there so by removing the doors and the hood we were able to kind of break the van up into more manageable sections and basically you have sections where you can just spray off into the plastic masking and you don't have an overlapping joint. So that was another one of the, the major contributing factors to why we wanted to take the doors off of the van. It also made it where it was much easier to sand them and they're kind of tall so we would have had to be up on the ladder to spray them if they were on the van. So basically putting them on saw horses, getting them where we could get to them, making it where we could spray the door jams in the back of the doors, it all played into why we chose to take them off. So we got all the windows off, we got the hood, or the we got all the doors off, the hood off. We moved them over into the shade because that's the other thing. If you're painting in direct sunlight, especially with black primer, the surface of the van will get so hot that the paint will flash at a very very quick rate, and that's something that you want to try to avoid. You want the surface to be roughly the temperature that your reducer is mixed for. So we were using a slow reducer in our epoxy paint that we were spraying and that that had a working temperature up to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. On the day that we painted it was roughly 65-75 degrees and overcast which ended up we couldn't have got any better weather to spray the van. We did get a couple bugs but other than that um, the weather ended up being perfect for putting on the paint on the van. So we were really pleased with that. We were very fortunate. Um, so we're taping up everything, going through all the windows, taping those up, and making sure that we get the tape lines where we want them. It ended up when we untaped everything, we're actually pretty successful with our tape jobs. There was a couple little places here and there where we got paint where we didn't want to and we didn't quite get paint where we wanted to. But all in all, the time we spent taping everything and making sure all that was right was well worth it. Another thing that we learned through the process, we ended up taping and untaping and taping and untaping and taping and untaping the van probably five or six times total during all the primer that we sprayed and the top coat. And one thing that I would highly recommend is getting automotive painter's tape. So we started out using your standard stuff from Lowe's, the blue masking tape, and that ended up being not as good. We tried some delicate surface quick release tape. That didn't work very well. So then I finally went on Amazon. You can find the link below if you want to get the exact tape and masking stuff that we use. I highly recommend it. Um, the yellow automotive tape, it works wonders on a vehicle. It, yeah, it's kind of funny. Yeah, they make it for cars. No wonder. It works great. So we ended up using a couple rolls of it, uh, actually three rolls of the lay and spray masking tape that has the plastic attached to it. But 
I could not be more pleased with how that stuff worked compared to the stuff you can find at Lowe's or whatnot that has just the regular home style painting supplies. So it definitely pays to get the automotive uh, brand from 3M when you're trying to spray because the paint lines pull off easier. Everything works easier than if you try to get the regular masking tape. So we're going around spraying all the doors here. It's uh, it was, it had them a little bit low. It was kind of difficult to get underneath and get the inside of the door. There's actually a couple places on the door I'm spraying right there that I didn't get as well as I thought I had. The door that my dad sprayed actually turned out a lot better. Go figure, he's got a lot more experience painting than I do. One strategy that we tried to use when we were painting the doors and the rest of the van was to switch who was painting. So before, I basically sprayed all the primer on the van, except for a couple times when my dad helped me out. When I couldn't get down for the weekend, he sprayed a couple layers of primer on there over bodywork and stuff. But for the most part, whenever we were spraying, it was either him spraying the whole thing or me spraying the whole thing. And you don't really think about it, but the paint gun, after a while, that thing gets pretty heavy because you're holding a quart of paint with it while you're spraying and the weight of the hose and everything. And you're in awkward positions trying to spray up high, down low, upside down, sideways, all kinds of ways. So, I mean, personally, my arms got really tired during the process. And I found that when I got tired, I tended to paint poorly. <laughs> I would try to rush the strokes. I wouldn't get as even as I wanted to. And the paint wouldn't come out of the gun and lay down quite as well when I was tired. So basically, on this go-round, he did a door, I did a door. We tried to switch off. And when we did the, the top coat on the van... Basically, we did every other section was a different person painting. And towards the end of the, the last coat on the van, we ended up doing three wet coats on everything. And in the video here, you're only going to see the first coat because the second and third coats, you really can't tell anything. It just looks like I'm spraying nothing on a door that's painted green. So didn't really want to bore you with that. But the by the end of it, I almost couldn't hold the, the paint gun up. I mean, that was probably two hours of continuous painting. We would mix a can and spray it out of the gun. Mix a can, spray it out of the gun. And you'll see in some cases where I'm painting, and then I'll grab the, the gun with two hands and try to keep myself steady. Because the other thing is, I'm a right-handed person, and so I tend to have a much more even stroke with my right hand while I'm painting. If I try to paint with my left hand, it would look like a kindergartner had sprayed the, the van, so I was really trying to avoid that, but that led to my right arm getting really tired really fast. But, and some of the times you're just, you're like two strokes away and you're like, oh, I don't think I'm going to make it, and you just know that you just have to finish it because that's a, it's a really important thing to keep a wet edge as you're painting. If you paint from dry or sorry wet to dry the entire time basically you're doing a half overlap and your stroke is passing over half of your previous stroke that's what's called wet to dry painting and if you do the opposite and end up leaving a dry streak in between your two strokes and then come back your paint is not going to blend as well you'll get a, a chalkier drier more textured finish because it's not wet to dry as you're painting. And that's something, especially on the top coat, that I was really trying to focus hard on, is to make sure that I was keeping nice even strokes, going wet to dry every time, and making sure that I wasn't leaving any space in between the strokes to leave dry spots. That would show up later. Because on the van, not so much on the door panels here, but on the bigger sections of the van, it's really easy to see imperfections in the paint because it's such a big surface and it's in your face. It's right at eye level. Like if I was painting the roof, I wouldn't worry about it that much. But on the sides of the van where you're looking, where we're going to take a lot of pictures, where we really care about the quality of the paint job, it was really important to try to maintain that painting uh, procedure and keep that wet edge going as we sprayed. Another thing that we did 
is we tried to paint the harder areas first. So that's why if you notice on the doors, we went around the bottom areas, we sprayed everywhere where it was hard to get, and then we came back and did the long strokes across the middle of the door. And this is because when you first get the gun in your hand, you're not as tired, you're thinking better, you know that you have to get the certain areas on the, the door, and you can think through all those things. And two, with the edges, you're less likely to get overspray on the other sides of them. So you can do a little bit of dry to wet painting, if you will, a little bit of the inverse of what I was explaining earlier. As long as you do it fast enough. You don't want completely, completely dry. But um, So we went around the bottom of all the doors, tried to get all the areas that you'll see when you open the door, so all of that matches. We didn't want to see any white except for the inside of the van when we got done painting, which in the end we're going to spray foam the inside of the van and put paneling up to, to cover all that up. So you probably won't see hardly any white unless we end up painting the cabinets white and the ceiling white or something like that. So we're going to try to keep a, a pretty good color scheme throughout the van. And if you want to stay more up to date on what's going on with the van than the YouTube channel, you can check out the Fur and Fam Instagram, the Fur and Fam Facebook, and our Fur and Fam website, which also has our blog and some other van related stuff on it as well. So check that out, and you'll get updated a lot closer to what's actually going on in the YouTube videos. I try to keep up with things, but a lot of times life gets in the way, and video editing honestly takes a, a lot of time so check in with those other sources of keeping up with the van and we'll get back with videos as fast as we can hopefully staying up with everything that's going on so you'll notice here on all the doors we're doing horizontal strokes or if they were on the van it would be front to back strokes on the second and third coats we vary our stroke pattern and on the second stroke we did up and down strokes or side to side in this video to try to make the paint lay more evenly and eliminate any streaks that you see in the paint so we did this on the small components but on the van itself we stuck with side to side and that's just because painting a really big surface up to down we would have had really really long strokes going up the side of the van or either we would have had to break it up into more sections and have more chances for overlaps and so that's why we stuck with the side to side and it ended up with three wet coats of paint on the van you really couldn't see the strokes anyways because we varied where one we varied where the overlapping was so we started on the back door one van of the side of the van and worked our way around to the front and then continued on to the other side of the van and tried to vary where the overlaps were every time. So in preparation for paint, we took a, a clean towel and wiped the entire van down with a clean towel. And this was just to get any of the sanding dust that was left from the wet sanding or any other things that could have gotten on the van. Because one thing about paint is it's really particular about the surface that it's sprayed on. So if there had been any oil from our hands or any types of things in the primer that the paint didn't react too well, any types of contaminants basically, you would have seen spots in the paint. And that's something that we definitely tried to avoid. So we took all the parts inside so we could work on spraying the outside of the van. We started on the, the other side that you can't see in the video, worked our way around, and started laying on the top coat. And we tried to get as much as we could in the door jams. There's only a couple places that we ended up missing. And those were behind little components that we couldn't take out like the switch that tells the van when the door is open and when it's closed that turns on the interior light and things like that and that's just where we couldn't get the gun behind enough because we had to mask off the doors and that's one thing we lost a little bit of time because we had to mask off the doors because we decided to take them off but you can never get a door jam painted as well as you can if you just go ahead and take the door off 
and it was worth the extra time in masking, worth the extra time in taking the masking off, and worth the money we spent in masking to make sure that the the door jams were going to match the rest of the van and not have any white spots left over. So you can see here as we're spraying, we're trying to stop the strokes in a straight line. And another thing we're trying to do is keep the gun aimed pretty much straight at the van. One strategy that you can use is to try and always keep the gun nozzle a little bit angled toward the direction that you're painting. And that's because you don't really want any overspray on the area that you painted before because the overspray is going to leave a textured, somewhat chalky finish that you want to try to avoid. So if you can always keep the gun angled slightly towards the area that you're painting towards, your overspray will go in front of you, and then on your next section that you paint, you'll cover up your overspray. And that's just a, a kind of a more picky technique. It's probably something that doesn't really matter all that much, but it's something that we tried to do as we were spraying, just so we would get the best possible finish that we could. And another thing that we did is we used the, the little wooden step that you see there because the top of the van right under the rain gutter, me and my dad are both not the tallest people on the planet, so reaching all the way up there, all the way around the van, three times for the three coats of paint, it would have gotten really old. The paint at the top near the rain gutter would not have looked as good because we would have been fanning out the spray and not been the same distance and the same angle next to the van with the spray gun as we were at the bottom. And even then we were still on my, you can see I'm on my tiptoes at the top trying to get up high enough to get full coverage in the rain gutter there. But that part of the paint job, it turned out really well. We didn't see any negative effects of that. Really the only place that it affected us was at the top of the window inserts where there's not really windows. There is a flat part that we really didn't get excellent coverage with on the other side of the van. But, I mean, it got enough coverage where you can't really tell it. And two, you can't see that surface unless you're eight feet tall, which not many people are. So you really won't ever see it. And it's got paint on it, so we're not worried about it rusting or anything like that. So all in all, the way we chose to break the van up and paint it, it ended up working out pretty well. We'll end up on the next episode coming through and painting the roof and painting the raptor coat under the bottom and putting everything back together. And also we paint the trim pieces that go around the grill and the headlights because we had to do a little modifications like you saw in the, the previous video or the previous couple of videos. But all in all, the paint went on really well. We got the first coat, second coat, and third coat on the middle of the van. So check back in next week for next week's video. And we'll be finishing up the paint, spraying the Raptor, and calling it a day on the first step of the van project, which is the restoration. So thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, hit that thumbs up button. If you have any questions or comments, leave those below, and we'll get back to you as fast as we can. And if you're ready for next week's episode, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell so you get the notification, and we'll be back next week. And if you can't wait until then, check out our website, furinfam.com, and if you need the link, it's in the description below.